How you doing? Welcome to Game Fondue Reviews. In this video, we're going to check out Vaughn. Not sure if I'm saying that right, because I don't know how to say words that start with DV, but we're going to go with Vaughn. It's a two-player abstract game designed by Chris Berm. So we're going to jump right in with a brief description of the rules, see a few example turns and a final situation being played out. Then I'll finish with some closing remarks. This is the setup for a game of Vaughn. All you really need to do is give one player all the white pieces and two of the red Vaughn pieces, and the other player takes all the black pieces and the third remaining Vaughn piece. The game is played in two phases. The first is the placing phase, in which all of these are placed on the board, and the second is the stacking phase, in which uh, tiles are moved around to uh, conquer more space and, and more territory. So during the placing phase, all players do, beginning with the white player, is place these on the board. They must start with the three Devon pieces, but then they continue with their own, like so. Following this, after all the spaces are filled on the board, is the stacking phase. And the way the stacking phase works is players move one of their stacks on the board. It is that player's stack if his color is on top. So in this example, even though there is an equal number of black and white pieces in this stack, it is still white stack because white is on top. So they'll move one of their stacks that is not surrounded. So for instance, if there was a black piece here, um, but he was fully surrounded, meaning there's no way for him to move in the center here, he cannot move. So this would not be a piece that could move. But uh, a lot of pieces on the edge can move. So let's take a stack here, a theoretical stack of four pieces that white controls. So for white's turn, white could choose to move a variety of stacks in the board. Let's say white wants to move this particular stack. The stack moves the amount of pieces that are in it, so this stack moves four pieces. A stack of one can only move one space. So this stack of four, if white wants to move it any direction, but white's going to go this way, one, two, three, four, and it must land on an occupied space, and that it just essentially makes the stack bigger. It can't land on an empty space, although it's fine to move across them like so. And then at the end of the turn, Players check to see if their pieces are still attached or linked to Devon pieces, which are essentially power sources. And uh, in this particular case, all of the pieces on the board are linked to Devon pieces um, because they are connected to them in a line. Also, if Devon piece is in a stack, that stack is always connected to that Devon piece. So let's do the same example, but instead of moving the stack of four, white moves this stack of one like so. Now we check to see if all the pieces on the board are connected to Devon pieces, but they're not. These four are not, so they would immediately be removed from the game because there's no continuous link of pieces, or uh, in this case, the stack. You just have to be linked to that stack that would allow them to stay on the board. So let's go see a few example turns played. We'll briefly go through the placing phase and then a little more in depth on the stacking phase, including seeing an uh, end game condition. Let's begin with the placing phase. So white has to go first and must place a red Devon and black must go second and place his Devon as well. And then white continues black, white. I'm not going to think about these too much and we're going to jump ahead to the completed board in just a moment. Welcome back. We're finishing up the placing and it is done. So even though white has placed last, white begins the second phase of the game, which is the stacking phase. So white has to move one of white's own stacks. So white moves a stack of one, one space. That piece was not surrounded. Anything not on the outside of the board, which is this group here, cannot move the first turn of the game. So now black has a turn, um, and he's going to do something very similar. So now white decides to move the stack with the Devon two spaces. Now you'll note that um, nothing has been removed from the board yet because everything is still in contact with those Devon spaces. It's very simple. Players just kind of take turns moving their pieces, and but there's a, obviously a lot of strategy to it as well. So we'll move ahead a little bit so you can see a little uh, more action. We've progressed some in the game, and uh, you can see the board is a little more open now, and white has lost a piece in the process, but he's about to lose a lot more because it's Black's turn, and Black is going to move um, here, which essentially cuts this whole group off from Devon. The three Devons are here, uh, there, and at the bottom of this really big stack over here. So all of these pieces were just cut out of a power source by that move by black. So it continues with White's turn, and White's a little grumpy about what just transpired. 
So he's looking to do something similar, um, and he does. So all of these pieces are now wiped off. And we're now getting pretty close to the end. You'll see that some of the big stacks, it becomes very difficult to move them. Now it's actually Black's turn, but Black has no legal moves because Black uh, stacks are much too big for the lines that he's able to move in, so he can't move. But White has a few options, one of which is to do this. One, two, three, four, because that is a stack of four. And now Black still can't move, and White can, so White continues one, two, three, and that is a brutal finish for Black. So now that no player has any legal moves left, you essentially just count the number of tiles in each uh, person's control. So White controls all of these, and Black controls these. So White is definitely the winner. Vaughn is my favorite abstract game outside of chess. Chess just has a very soft spot in my heart because I played it almost every day growing up. But Devon has a lot of advantages over it nonetheless, uh, most notably being, you know, a more experienced player and a less experienced player tend to be a much more competitive match in Devon, or at least feel more competitive for the inexperienced player, whereas in chess they just get, you know, ripped apart and it's very painful for them and they don't ever want to play again. But even when I play new players in Devon and, and you know, overtake them without too much difficulty, they tend to want to play it again. And that's just a sign that, you know, it's fun and, and they felt like they had a chance to win. It's also really neat that every game you and your opponent get to set up the pieces, even the Devon pieces. So where they are on the board really, you know, changes the game up a lot if they're close together or they're really far apart. Um, you know, and strategies uh, evolve a little bit differently every time, but, you know, the game still plays very quickly and very much the same. So I'd have to recommend this to anybody who enjoys abstract games. It's absolutely delightful. Or people looking for a good abstract game that plays quick with two players. Thanks for watching.